All right, guys, so this is my camera rig. I've got the uh, little bracket that fits on the bottom of the camera that slips down into this little dovetail right here. And the way I use this thing, this clamp holds this ball joint right here inside of this chuck. So this is dovetailed to fit the little bracket that goes on the bottom of the camera. And so when I want to film like leather working or anything like that, I put this thing in this little chuck right here. Tighten her up and that's steady. There's a single screw in the center of the chuck. It's open all the way through. I actually did a video where I turned a spoon and I'll put a link. Where's it going to be? Right there. There'll be a card right there showing where I made the spoon that I made this chuck in. But I need one more of these. I have two right now that I use. And I have one on this corner of the shelf. I have one on the other corner of that shelf so that I can shoot in from the other direction if I want. But I normally have one sitting over the lathe. And so when you guys see my shots from down over the lathe, I'm actually moving one of these over there. But I want to just put one there. So we're going to do a video just on that chuck um, and if you want to see how that chuck is used to turn spoons and stuff follow that card up there all right guys so this is just a piece of pine three by three square and i like pine for this because it's so soft it has a tendency to uh move and flex a little bit more because that's really the way this thing's going to work you're going to be moving and flexing it All right, so what we're gonna shoot for, the ball in my little rig there is two inches in diameter. This being three, we're gonna turn this until we just lose the flats, just barely. Then we're gonna drill, well, you'll see, but we're gonna be drilling a couple of different holes through this and then splitting it. So um, there is a crack in this, but we can actually just, that split we have to make, we can do it on that crack because we're gonna need a crack in it anyway. That's the only one I see that's serious. And the length of this is fairly arbitrary right now. We will need a definite depth of holes and all that stuff to deal with. But uh, we get the camera centered back up on this and then we'll get this thing turned around and keep her going. So now I need a tenon back here. I'm gonna put the chuck in. I need a tenon way to grab this so that we can put the uh, Jacob's chuck in the tail stock and start drilling this thing out. Now, I'm gonna give myself an inch and a quarter of meat in the back. and two and a half inches to grab that ball. So we can always slide it out a little bit or trim that down, whatever we want to do. Would rather have more now than not enough. in the Jacobs chuck and I have a two inch Forstner bit. All right, so now I've got a two inch opening board out of here down to about there. I didn't quite make it to the line, but that's, that's fine. So now, 
I need to provide a smaller hole all the way through. So obviously it needs to be something small enough that once I blow through it, I'm not running into my chuck. So um, it doesn't really matter how big a hole as far as this thing functioning. Uh, difference is the bigger that through hole is, the easier it is gonna be to move this thing. You're gonna have less and more mass depending on the size of this hole. So I'm gonna go with a three quarter. So I've used it in the past and I know it'll it'll make it through there. And that'll leave me a good chunk of meat to actually support this when I'm clamping down. So, hole all the way through. Now, that crack, I'm gonna put this back in here so I can show you what's next. I'm gonna get the bandsaw out, and right here at this crack that runs all the way through this thing, we're going to clear out a gap about that big. A little bit of a gap right here. Doesn't have to be huge, it could be 3 16 quarter inch, whatever. Most of mine, it's a couple of curves. You just need this thing to be able to close a little bit. I'll make those two cuts all the way until it breaks through into here. So that this becomes a barely incomplete circle. All right, so there it is. So you just have a little tiny bit of a gap there. And that gives this thing the room to close a little bit. This next step, if if you're gonna use this to turn spoons, your next step will be different. Your next step, you're going to cut a gap in it right here for the handle of your spoon to come out of. This is a chuck that I made for two inch spoon. Same thing I have here. And then you would turn a sphere on your spoon, turn the handle, and then you stick the sphere in here with the handle poking out right there, like this. And that way you can actually grab that whole sphere. Then you turn this part flat and then hollow out the center. If you're using it to turn spoons, you wanna make sure that that gap goes between two teeth in your uh, chuck. So that as you're clamping down, you're not forcing that gap inside of a tooth and just compressing straight in on it. You want it to actually be able to move. I don't know if that actually makes a difference or not, but it makes sense to worry about it to me. So for all points and purposes, this is complete. Um, I am going to uh, sand the lines off of it and I'm going to Take those edges down just a hair, get the splinters off. But other than that, this project pretty much done. They're real quick, a couple of steps. All right, so the other thing, you don't need this tenon anymore if, uh, if you're just using it as the joint, you can leave it on there, but I'm gonna take it off. You don't, you don't have to have it. I'm gonna take it off just so this thing will sit a little bit further back. We got an inch and a half of meat back here, so I take a three inch screw with washers stacked up so the head will grab. That slips through there, and then that one single screw just anchors it wherever I want to hang it. So let me re-aim the camera. You can see this, this screw hole here where it's, it was mounted before and I've been moving them around, but now I'm going to have one just sitting there where I can just move that that camera mount 
then I just set her up here where I want it to be. Ball joint goes in. And she's she's up there. So that's it guys. That's how I make those. Um, just a simple, easy, quick project, like four steps. If you don't include sanding. Thanks for watching guys, and I will see you guys on the next one. See ya.